Databases. Introduction. Computers are great at storing and processing data, and it won't be too long in your programming career before you have the need to set up a database. Many other programs tend to have links to databases, which work away quietly, unseen in the background. Although RDMS, Relational Database Management Systems, sounds complex, it is based on a simple language that you will learn to control here. It's called SQL, Structured Query Language, and is a global standard written specifically for use with databases. Before we install and upload a database, we'll examine some of the problems and advantages of dealing with the simple paper-based methods of data control without a computer. In this video, paper databases, installing MySQL in Fedora and Raspbian, looking around a database, sorting and searching, generating a new database from scratch and inserting data. We are surrounded in our day-to-day -day life by databases. They are so common that we may not even recognize them as databases. Perhaps the simplest form is the list. A list can grow to have more and more items in it, and each item may have more information linked with that too. So you end up with a table. A table is made up of a number of rows and columns. In database terms, the columns are called fields, and the rows are called records. To remember which is which, I used to think of a list of criminals. Every criminal has a record. So, just remember, columns are fields, and rows are records. That's it. But what happens if two criminals have the same name? It's often useful to index lists with a unique number or key. The database then uses the key to refer to each criminal, not the name. The worst thing you can do in a database is confuse the contents. Imagine the problem a bank would have if it dropped account numbers in favour of just names. Paper or computer-based databases are useless unless they're employed to do something. Lists are used to store data in an orderly manner. Think about, say, a list of friends. The list may look like this. Before progressing, have a quick look at the list. Note three things about the columns, the field names. The field headings are unique and descriptive. Having two fields with the same name is nonsensical. Everything is in lowercase. You don't have to use lowercase, but you will see why it's an advantage later. Spaces are replaced by underscores. So what do you do with paper or computer lists? Well, there are basically three things you can do with each record. These are add a new friend, which is good, or worse, delete an ex-friend. Finally, you can modify some details, either because they have changed or are inaccurate. There are three things you can do with each field. These are also add, delete and modify. With all of these facilities available, we can use our table to sort the list or search for a particular requirement. So to recap, with paper-based tables or databases, columns in tables are known as fields. Rows in tables are known as records. Fields must have a unique name and are better, for humans, if they're descriptive. You will also make fewer errors if the names are all typed in lower case, although this is not mandatory. But spaces can't be used and are better replaced by underscores. We will see why later. There are three basic actions that can be taken with fields. Add, delete and modify. There are three basic actions that can be taken with records. Add, delete and modify. We can sort and search lists. That's it. There is nothing more to remember at this stage. Have a closer look at the table. The field holds different types of data. On paper, these types do not matter, but on a computer system they do. A computer wants to know whether you want to store a number, some text, and this includes characters and figures, or a date. The item is a small number, a type of key that uniquely identifies each record. If two friends have the same name, then the item or key field will help to separate them. Names can only be alphabetical characters, A to Z. I don't yet have a friend with a number in his or her name. Date of birth can take a different form, but I like the logical day, month, year option shown here. An email address can hold both letters and numbers, but must at least have an at sign in it to be correct. A mobile number is just that, a number that always starts with zero if it's dialed in this country. Wait is a shorter number and I really need to know it only to the nearest kilogram. I've decided to shorten home country as a two-character code, 
and Twitter is a tag which is once again a series of characters and numbers. We will see later how a computer divides data into three types, but there is another factor to consider – storage. I can keep my paper lists on sheets or cards, but either way I have to ensure that there is sufficient space to enter the details. Forms can help to organise data and data collection, and here the design of the form starts to matter. Handwritten forms should ensure that there is sufficient space to record the details, whatever the handwriting style, but there are additional constraints when dealing with computers. A problem with computers is that they are far more particular in their requirements when dealing with data. Let's take a simple example of the UK postcode. Brief research reveals that the postcode can take six different formats. A form needs to be able to deal with all of these formats. In the UK, this turns out to be a maximum of seven alphanumeric characters. That is a combination of letters and numbers. The spaces available to store the postcode in a form have to accommodate the longest option. Allocating only five spaces means that the shortest codes are stored, but the longer ones get lost. Allocating more than seven locations is a waste of space. This wasted space may not matter on small systems, but could grow to an unacceptable level on huge systems. The Pi has a limited amount of space, which is why you should also be careful with the way it is allocated. So, to recap, just two things about computer data, type and size. Computers recognise three types of data, the data types. These are a number, text and dates. And ensure that each field has a size, large enough to allow me to write in the data. The maximum size of any set is the very longest option for that field. My small list is relatively easy to maintain, but becomes more problematic the larger it gets. In a practical lesson, you would now be asked to sort and search a list, or even record how much time it takes to sort a shuffle pack of cards. Then imagine the situation in an office with large amounts of paper before computers arrived. Larger organisations would have spent a lot of time just handling paper files and trying to control the maintenance of their data before the advent of the computer. The two distributions of Linux we reference in this course vary slightly in the way they deal with the next stage. Neither Fedora or Raspbian have MySQL installed on their SD card by default. It needs to be downloaded and installed from the internet. Your Pi tells you what distribution is running when you first switch on, but if you are unsure you can confirm it by entering uname space minus a and cat slash proc version. Then, depending upon the results, you can either enter cat slash etc slash red hat hyphen release if it reports Fedora or Red Hat, or slash etc Debian underscore version if it reports Debian or Raspbian. The vast majority of software used in this course is open source. MySQL is open source and can quite legitimately be downloaded and run at no cost. You should only need to download and install MySQL once. So here goes. Start your Raspberry Pi and log in as root. You will need to fetch a copy of MySQL and install it. Fedora has a superb update called yum. Type yum group install MySQL. Yum goes off and searches for MySQL. It downloads it and installs it. I'll speed up the process of this video. In practice, this link will take a good eight minutes. Now start MySQL for the first time. Service MySQL Start. This begins the installation process and a screen full of useful help is displayed. When the service begins with the green OK, enter. Type in the line offered in the help presented on the screen. Slash user slash bin slash MySQL underscore secure underscore installation. Here we are starting MySQL and protecting it with a password. It's normally unwise to use the same password for your root access to Linux and to the services like MySQL, but this is your Pi, it's your option. Enter the password twice to confirm. 
You may be asked to remove the test database. This does not matter, enter Y. Reload the table privileges, yes. This confirms all of the changes. If you want MySQL to start automatically each time you start your Pi, then type check config MySQLD on. Oh. Let's now look at the Raspbian installation process. Start your Raspberry Pi and log in as root. A new Raspbian SB card does not contain MySQL, so it needs to be located, downloaded and installed from the internet. apt-get does this. Enter the command apt-get install mysql-server. The Pi chuntles off and if all is well, it finds the pre-configured packages and asks for your confirmation to install. Type Y. Fedorin and Raspbian act differently during installation. Raspbian produces a blue screen and requests a password for MySQL. It's normally unwise to use the same password for your root access to Linux and to services like MySQL. But this is your Pi. It's your option. The video is sped up here to save time, but watch the comments streaming past on your machine. They will not make any sense at the moment, but will start to become meaningful as you learn more. There are some long delays here. Nothing seems to happen, but be patient. Eventually, you drop back to the Raspberry Pi prompt, so it's time to test your new MySQL installation. Oh. To enter MySQL for the first time, type mysql-u root minus p. MySQL is the command. The u flag specifies the user, i.e. u, root, and the minus p provides the password. You can type your password in here after the p flag, but don't. Omitting it leaves it to MySQL to ask you directly, which is a little more secure. When you successfully enter MySQL, the prompt changes to MySQL. From here on, the command you type in will be in a new language called SQL, Structured Query Language. SQL is an international standard language written specifically to control databases. You may also use SQL with other popular commercial databases, such as Oracle, IBM DB2, Microsoft SQL and Access. Although SQL is an international standard, each implementation has small differences, but the basics are the same. With MySQL, one difference is that it's a very polite language. You have to say please at the end of every command. The please is written in the form of a semicolon. No semicolon, no command. There are two exceptions to the please rule. These are help and quit. Just type help with no semicolon to see the pages of useful help. You can follow these up later at your leisure. Before typing the second command, quit, let's have a look around inside MySQL. As we've said, MySQL is a database management system controlled by the very friendly English-sounding language SQL. MySQL runs a number of different databases, depending upon the size of your system. To demonstrate how friendly SQL is, take a guess at the command you need to enter to get it to show you the databases it holds. Yes, simply. Show databases, please. Nothing will happen if you forget the semicolon, so if you do at any time, just enter it separately on a new line. Like so. A brand new MySQL installation will always include at least two databases, called information underscore schema and MySQL. These are databases actually used by MySQL itself. Now, take another guess at the command needed to create a new database that we will call friends. Enter. Create database friends. Get used to the style where the system confirms any command with a small reply. MySQL is actually case insensitive. It does not matter whether the commands are entered in upper or lower case. You can enter commands in capitals, but I'm trying to be consistent in these videos with other subjects covered later in the course. Now to check the new database has been created, enter show databases. Again, if all has worked, there is a new database called Friends. Now, how easy can this get? Headed with success, you can now enter quit with or without the semicolon to leave MySQL and go back into Linux. Oh. Follow the next stage of this video, your Pi needs to access the internet, locate a database on our server, make a copy of it, and then install it into the Friends database you created a moment ago. Although this may sound complex, Linux and the internet conspire to make it really easy to achieve. We are going to use the command wget. Enter wget http colon slash slash mycsn.cc slash friends.sql. 
the small file should download quickly as shown on this line. Now the friends SQL file needs to be put into your friends database. Type mysql u root p friends less than friends.sql. Notice that the less than sign here is being used as an arrow. So the file friends.sql, the one you just downloaded, goes into the empty friends database you created with the create database friends command a moment ago. Enter the password and this powerful command just works. The database should now be available for use in the next section. If you wish, you can examine the contents of the friends.sql using nano, but this is probably best left to the end of the video. Let's now concentrate on the main point of this video, structured query language. Over 10 minutes into this video and we've yet to really start learning SQL. So what have we achieved? We began by learning that simple databases are little more than computer versions of paper-based lists or tables, the sort we can store on paper or card files. We use flashy terms like RDBMS, Relational Database Management Systems, to impress our friends, and to tell them we have a special international standard language, SQL, Structured Query Language, to control databases. A table on paper has rows and columns, and the computer version has fields and records. But we've already forgotten now which is which. Remember, every criminal has a record. To make things easy, we used helpfully descriptive file names and only used lowercase, although we don't have to, and replaced all spaces with underscores. So that we don't confuse records with the same details in, we do as banks do and use unique account numbers which are stored in a key field. Data can be divided into three general types, confusingly called data types. They are text, numbers and dates. The data type matters in computers, as does the size of the space we need to store the data. We then used yum in Fedora and apt-get in Raspbian to go onto the internet to locate, download and install MySQL. This took a little time, but we started it and protected it with the password. Finally, we used wget to fetch a copy of a small database from the internet called Friends and placed it in our database for the next part of this video. That's all. That's all! So sit back and enjoy the second half, where we use SQL to create databases, add tables that have fields and records. We learn to add, delete and modify fields, and add, delete and modify records. With control of the tables, we can then search and sort the data, and use our new power, power to control, control the world. world. SQL is what is known as a high-level language, which means it sounds very much like a clipped English. To enter MySQL, just type mysql-u root p. You are in MySQL when you successfully enter the password. Everything typed from now on is SQL as used in MySQL. And don't forget the please, the semicolon at the end of every command. MySQL can run a number of different databases on your Pi, depending upon its size. To see the database on the Pi, the command is simply show databases, please. MySQL responds by showing a list of databases. On a new machine, there will typically only be three or four, depending upon the options selected during the setup. But two that always will be visible to you are an information schema database and a MySQL database. Even MySQL uses an SQL database to run itself. And yes, there's our friends database copied across the internet if all went well. You can see and access all of these databases because you are logged in as super user root. As with Linux, root access is powerful and it is possible to blow everything away with an incorrect command, so take care. Recalling that each database is a list, a table, or even a collection of tables, we can see the tables in the three databases by typing. Show tables in MySQL. As you are root, you can do this. You can see the list of tables in the MySQL database, starting with columns underscore privileges, DB and events, and ending in user. So try. Show tables in information underscore schema to reveal a list of tables in the information underscore schema database. Here we see character sets, columns, events, files, right down to triggers, user privileges, and views. 
Now this is not expected to mean anything at this point. It's just an example of the tables you can expect to see in other databases. Note that unlike us, they use capitals, but still have meaningful titles and use underscores instead of spaces. Finally, see our small friends database. Show table in friends. This reveals just one table called persons. So we can now see all of the databases and know how to see all of the tables in all of the databases. Time for a jingle. Oh. Looking deeper inside tables. You now need to know two things. The first is that the system can recall the contents of any table from any database simply by specifying the database name and the table name, separated by a full stop. The second thing you need to know is that the shortcut term for everything is star. It's used in a lot of places, not just databases, and is referred to as a wildcard. Combining these two bits of knowledge, we can now construct the query to ask to see the contents of everything in any table in any database. Simply type, select star from information underscore schema dot process list, where process list is a table name. Try a few examples using the database and tables you've discovered. Many of the tables at this stage will be empty. For example, select star from mysql.proc, which produces the response, empty set zero seconds. Others will produce what appears to be gobbledygook. Try select star from information underscore schema dot tables. Now this appears to be a real mess, which it is but only because my screen is not wide enough or tall enough to display the response correctly. All of those dashes form a table, and if presented properly, look like this. Again, we're not interested in the details here at present. It's just an exploration of the weird screens you may come across when playing. This completes the section on how to look at all the data in any table in any database. Oh. Now let's concentrate on one table in one database, our friends database, with its table called persons. It's been designed to be small enough to fit onto the screen. Showing databases and showing the tables in the databases is fine. But to remove the need to keep specifying a database, we can set a default. Here we want to see our friends database, so just type use friends. Notice the confirmation words database changed. Until we change the database again, everything we now do is reference to friends. So we don't need to specify friends anymore. It saves a lot of typing. Showing columns in tables. Show columns from persons. This shows you the columns or fields in the table persons. In fact, you can also say show fields from persons. A shorter method again is describe persons. Notice why short descriptive headings are useful. These outputs are easier to read. The field names are improved if they are self-explanatory. We will explain these other details like type, null, key, and default shortly. So we can use databases, show tables in databases, and we can describe the table. We have also seen how to use star to select everything in a table. Oh. Let's now see how to be a little more selective in what we view. Select star from table name, where star is known as a wildcard. Friends is a small database designed to fit on the screen. A larger database would fly up the screen and be unreadable, as we've seen. So type. Select star from persons to see a complete persons table inside the friends database. Now the two uses of databases are sort and search. Given we can conveniently see the whole table on the screen, we can first demonstrate sort. Oh. One of the practical tasks in a paper-based system that could take ages was sorting alphabetically. Just consider how long it takes to sort a simple pack of 52 playing cards into order. Computers perform these functions easily and quickly, and it's meat and drink to MySQL. Try these commands. Select star from persons, order by surname, to see the contents sorted by surname. Or select star from persons, order by mobile, to see the contents sorted by mobile number. Should you wish to reverse the order, select star from persons, order by first underscore name, desk. The desk at the end is short for descending. Notice the pie is not even breaking sweat performing these commands. 20 rows set in one hundredth of a second. Oh. So sorting is a breeze. Let's try the second function, searching records. Being a little bit more selective, we now refine our search. Select star from persons where 
first underscore name equals Richard. Select star from persons where weight is greater than 80. The tables are produced in order almost instantaneously. Whereas star means everything, the percent sign means a segment from. So if you only want to find names ending in ARD, enter. Select star from persons where first underscore name is like percent ARD. This means any first name ending in ARD. Try this. Select star from persons where first underscore name like RI percent. This means first name beginning with letter RI and the remainder does not matter. Try select star from persons where first name is like percent C percent, which will sort any first name with a C in it anywhere. The star sign is a wild card and can search for anything. The percent sign is used to match any smaller sequence in a string. The underscore matches only a single character. Try select star from persons where first underscore name is like RI underscore HARD. If they existed, any names like Richard would qualify, such as these. Oh. You can search on more than one field at a time using what is known as a logical operator. Two common logical operators are AND and OR, and may be used like this. Select star from persons where first name equals Richard and mobile equals. Select star from persons where first name equals Richard or country equals US. The result for the AND means that both name and mobile have to be correct to be displayed. The results for the OR function means that either name or mobile have to be correct to be displayed. We can combine all the individual selectors to form even more complex commands. Try select star from persons where first name equals Richard or country like U underscore order by surname desk. Oh. Finally, we can be a little bit more selective in the output when we make our selection. We do not need to see everything, so try select name, email from friends where first underscore name equals Richard order by surname desk. Only the name and email are shown. Oh. This style of SQL, what is known as the syntax, should start to now become familiar. The commands have a rhythm when they are spoken, and like any language will become more familiar as they are practiced. Now play and try SQL for yourself. The more you use, the easier it becomes. You will notice that most of the problems are now just a matter of remembering where the speech marks and brackets are. This will be related to data types and will be investigated further in the next section of this video. Oh. We now know how to enter MySQL as a root user. MySQL minus U root minus P. We know how to look around at the databases. Show databases. We know how to see fields and columns in any database. Describe database name. And we know how to use a database use databases and look at the table or tables in a database show tables in database name and then show fields in a table show columns in table name we can look at all the data in all of the tables select star from table name or just search some data and print it in some order this completes a reasonably thorough coverage of just looking inside databases tables and data Let's now look at how to create a new database, add a table inside a database and add data into the table and then rectify any errors in the data. Oh. Let's now build and populate an entirely new database. Use this table as an example of a paper-based system. It's a simple list of items that I need to order. Item is just a line number for reference. Quantity is the quantity I want to order. Part number is the number in the catalogue. Description is a quick description to help me remember what it is. Price is the price, followed by the date required is the date by which I need the parts. When entered is the day when I put the entry into the table. And comment is any note I need to keep about the part. The first thing to do is to rename the fields in the table headings. Item, quantity, part number, description, price, date required, date entered, and comment. All lowercase, short but descriptive, and space is replaced. Replacing spaces is important. 
Using lowercase is my personal preference, but it is consistent with other programming styles you will encounter later in this course. We now need to select a data type and size for each field. The requirements will look like this. So the first task is to create a database called my underscore orders. We've already used the create database command before. So enter create database my underscore orders. The system confirms query OK. One row affected, which is satisfying. Prove it by entering show databases. Now use my underscore orders. Type use my underscore orders. It's confirmed. Before entering data, we have to prepare a table to accept it. So would you believe the command is create table? Well, it is. But MySQL needs to be prepared to accept data of a particular type and size for each field. The general command can be entered as one long line, but looks better if it's broken down for clarity like this. And this will become create table table name, column name, followed by data type. This will become create table orders, item integer, quantity integer, part number character, description character, price integer, date required date, date entered date, and comment character. And following our claim that SQL is nicely simple, this would work. To insert data, well, you guessed it, the command is insert into. Again, the command can be entered as a long line, but broken down for clarity, it may be written as insert into table name, column one, two, three, four, the values one, two, three, and four. And in my instance here, insert into orders, item, quantity, part number, description, price, date required, date entered, and comment. Now, this is where most problems come about. The entries between the first set of brackets are the titles of the columns to be written to, with the values provided in the second set of brackets. Both sets are separated by commas, but note, numbers are just entered as numbers. Text or characters have to be surrounded by speech marks and dates must be entered in the format year, 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 month, month, day, day. If you only want to add item, quantity and part number, then this can be done in two ways, by leaving blanks between the commas or not specifying the columns at all. Both work, but there's a lot of unnecessary management here. Why not let the Pi do some work for you? Try this as an alternative command. Apart from specifying the size of each field, there are four modifications here. The line, item int not null auto increment primary key, removes the need to add any numbers or keep track of them. MySQL will keep a number of the values and automatically increment it every time a new part is entered. This saves a lot of work and we will see it in operation in a moment. The line date entered timestamp default now will automatically enter the date and time when the record is inserted. The line quantity int three not null now specifies it has a three digit integer, but it can't be zero. The insert into command can now be modified to take account of these changes. Now let's see everything in operation. We've already created the database my underscore orders and issued the command to use my underscore orders. So everything is using my underscore orders as default. The next thing is to create the table orders in the database my underscore orders. So enter create table orders and for clarity, I'll add a return to separate lines here. Open brackets and now the table headings followed by the data types. The first is item and it's an integer, so int. And now what are known as the constraints. It can't be zero. So enter not null. We want SQL to deal with the numbering for us. So auto underscore increment. And finally, we want it to be the key for the table. So we enter primary key, then comma. Next, another non-zero integer line. Table heading quantity int three, not null, comma. The next two lines are character strings of 12 and 40 characters long. So part underscore number, character 12, comma, and description, carat 14, comma. Priced as a plain five element integer. Date re underscore required, date, comma. And then the next special date, date underscore enter timestamp, along with the default value of exactly now, comma. 
Then the final heading comment, character string 200, followed by the closing brackets and please. The system confirms everything is well. So, with the database my underscore orders now containing a table called orders, we can start to enter the data. Again, this line can be entered as one long line, but to make it clearer, let's enter. Insert into order, open bracket, the first field headings, quantity, part underscore number, description, price, date underscore required, and comment, close brackets. Values, reading from the table on the screen, 34, just a number. But then the part number is in quotes because it's being stored as text. This may seem strange, but these part numbers could be confused with the calculation 934 minus 233. You may also come across this problem when storing telephone numbers. The computer will ignore the leading zero and therefore not print it accurately. So the part number goes in as speech marks. Price is an integer, so it's just a number in pence, and the date must go in as 2012-06-13. Notice the month is 06 and not just 6. The 0 is a place marker for the system. The 6th of June would therefore be 2012-06-06, not 2012-66, which will confuse dear old SQL. And finally, comment is in speech marks because it's a character string. Notice there's no entry for the item or the date entered field. These are done automatically by SQL, and we'll see this in a moment. Close brackets and please. One line entered. If you look into the insert into command, you will see that only data entries change, so you can use the up arrow key to retrieve the previous line, just edit the values and re-enter. This is a quick method of data entry. So quickly entering in the next two lines to finish. Now we can use the describe orders field to see the table description. Notice the constraints here the primary key, the not nulls, and the auto increment. Finally, select star from orders, and here we see item and date stamp have been entered for us by SQL. There's one error in this table, so we can use the update command to change the quantity for the item number three. Update orders, set quantity equals 23, where item equals three. When you're finished with any database, you can type drop database name. We've come a long way in this introduction. We have seen that data exists in three general types, numbers, text, and dates. Care has to be taken in the way each type is treated. We have examined databases, tables, columns or fields, and rows and records, and seen that we can search and sort data. We can also add, delete, and modify in SQL. We can show the progress to date in a table and divide the commands further into the data manipulation language, DML, and the data definition language, DDL. You can be confident you've got a good grasp on the content presented in this video if you can complete the following table with an example of a typical command. The only way to ensure that you've understood the contents is to practice using the immediate mode with its immediate feedback. Don't just sit and watch this video, try a few examples for yourself now. It has been demonstrated here how easy it is to transfer data between machines and to process it. The potential is enormous. All of the values of firms like Amazon and Facebook is based on their possession and control of personal information, proving that information is power. Be aware of the laws surrounding possession and use of personal information. The implications of some of the surreptitious methods of tracking on the internet have yet to become apparent.